Good afternoon. I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Granville County Board of Education special meeting for Monday, June 24th, 2024. And we do have a quorum, and Dr. Frederick has joined us by um, virtually. At this time, I'd like for us to have a moment of silence. As we go about our business today, our vision, every student will reach his or her full potential, prepared to thrive in a changing world. Our mission, we empower every student every day. I'd like to call on Board Member Labreck if you will lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance. Yes, please rise. The next item on our agenda is item 501, insurance providers. I think that will be Ms. Hines giving us that information. Absolutely. And we will need, this is an action item. Thank you. Good afternoon, board members. Um, we have our insurance recommendations for the 24-25 school year. Um, uh, and they're in front of you. Um, I, you may have noticed that they were just recently posted um, because Surrey Insurance, our major provider, um, was really working down to the wire to get the best possible prices for us. So I um, just wanted to review as we go. Um, notice that errors in emissions um, through the North Carolina School Board Trust has come down a bit. Um, it's $809 less than um, previous years, and that's due to ADM. It's purely ADM based. Um, so we're um, doing fine with that. Um, our volunteer accident and field trip um, through the school board association, we haven't gotten the invoice for that yet, but um, typically it's, it's right around the same cost every year. Um, Surrey Insurance, our, our, this is our major insurance provider. Um, our Um, note that our commercial property um, is up by 46,000 and, and that is the st a standard increase in property insurance um, from year to year um, but it is definitely something to, to watch and, and be concerned about workers comp um, you'll see also an increase in 44,000 we've seen that continuously happening um, we have some questions um, about that but we're, we're just going to be looking into it um, we had an OSHA uh, visit last week and uh, I, I believe uh, we're, we're seeing a lot of uh, correlation between our OSHA rating and and workers comp insurance which we know that's the case um, but we learned a lot about um, our OSHA reporting and um, we, we actually think that that can be improved in the future but the, again this year we also when we every year we have a workers comp audit and they either charge us more or give us a refund based on our actual issues. So that's always um, something to look forward to, for sure. Um, our automobile um, insurance is going to is recommended to continue with EMC insurance. Note, um, we've had a $5,600 decrease, and that is due to Chris Ham getting rid of outdated vehicles. So we appreciate that, his, his efforts in that. Our uh, voluntary accident and um, accident co accidental coverage through K and K insurance. That is the insurance that our our families have the option to to purchase. So this is not something. This is not an automatic coverage for all students. This is simply giving our students the option, our families the option to um, get that accident insurance. Through, also through K&K, &K, we have the catastrophic accident for all students, um, and, and that price has come down just a little bit because, again, it's ADM-based. Um, I'm recommending that we add um, catastrophic 
high school athletic insurance this year. If, if you remember, several years ago, that insurance used to come through the North Carolina High School Athletic Association, and that was discontinued. At the time, um, I was, I, you know, I, the the recommendation I had I had received was that KNK offers athletic um, insurance. However, I'm I'm concerned as I really dig into it. I'm concerned that it's not it's not the best coverage for our students. If something were to happen, I want to be sure that our students, our athletes, are covered in that situation. So, and for a $5,200 cost, I think that's a reasonable cost um, for that. Ms. Hans. Yes. What are the limits of that policy? Do I do know? not have, off the top of my head, it's a million dollar policy. Okay. Thanks. Now, um, for the catastrophic accident, um, the deductible, you have to get past that deductible first. And if I rem off the top of my head, it's $25,000 deductible. So it's catastrophic for sure. Um, and, and some of the, the, the lesser costs can, are handled by that errors and emissions um, through the North Carolina School, School Board Trust. So we, um, we have other coverage that can handle that. Um, fidelity bond, we, we usually do that in March of each year, so, but the cost is generally the same from year to year. And work-based learning, the same, but we just don't have that available to us yet. Cyber insurance um, recommended that we change our, uh, our provider based on um, the quotes that we received, and, uh, and that's a, a, just an increase in about $200. And then, of course, we have our community schools accident coverage. That's for our after-school programs. Are there any questions? I have one, Ms. Hans. What's the difference between volunteer accident and the volunteer accident coverage? Okay. Ah, okay. So volunteer accident, that's if an, a volunteer on our property, okay. there, if there's an accident, okay. right? But the voluntary accidental coverage is if, that, that is what parents can volunteer to, to, to subscribe to that okay. um, accident. It's for their students but it's not mandated that all pa pa families have to, to get that insurance. It's voluntary. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's a good question. The comprehend of the uh, property, commercial property coverage. Yes. That includes, I assume, at this point, the Holly Campus. Correct. Correct. If that change, as that changes, we will be able to take that off of the policy. Do you have any idea how much it would reduce? I do not. Okay. I do not. So this comes to you as an action item. <coughs> motion, motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. The motion passes Aye. unanimous. Aye. The next item we have is our budget review. Year to date, budget review, and I'm gonna take a moment to breathe for just a second. And in that breath, I want to thank every single book, bookkeeper, purchasing assistant, the principals, the directors, every single person who has touched money in some way in this district and who has helped us meet our goals. Um, incredible, we have an amazing group of individuals who who handle the business of this district. And I just want to take a moment to thank each and every one of them for their hard work. Um, we, at this time of year, we tend to be very persnickety about our deadlines and, and maybe push a little hard. Um, and I appreciate everybody for putting up with, um, with our, um, us at that time of year. Um, you'll see the budget review. This is a moving document at this moment um, of the year as we clean up, um, as, as we fix things, um, so you'll see lots of changes. Um, at this time, when, as we look at this, our final payroll has happened. All, all but one of our charter schools has been paid because we haven't received their invoice yet. Um, so the, the majority of, of expenses that we have in the district um, are covered in this. The local budget, I want you to notice that we have, with the encumbrances, we have about 166,000 left 
um, in the school year. Um, we tend to have bills, invoices that come in after June. So it is potentially we could have to add, dig into fund balance by another 50,000 ish, 30 to 50,000 is what I'm expecting. That's not horrible. Um, that's, that's pretty much what I call uh, landing even um, at the end of the school year um, when you're talking about such large numbers. Um, but I just want to put it in your, he in your head that we may dig into fund balance just a little bit more, waiting to see what comes in. Um, for our state budget, you might see our remaining, bu remaining balance of 1.4 million and you think, how could you have possibly zeroed out the state budget? But yes, we have zeroed out the state budget. Um, so I broke it down for you guys. Um, the, the great news is almost 582,000 of that 1.4 million carries forward to next year. So we're, we're gonna use that money moving forward. Um, that's, and that's a, a wonderful thing. Um, about 761,000 of it, we can't use. We just can't touch it in any other way. We have used it as much as we can use it and because it's for a very specific purpose. So we can't use those funds. The other, the remaining about 80,000 um, is, is, is what I call money left on the table, which never makes me happy, but, but we, we know the reasons why the funds, the funds were left behind. Um, driver's Ed and ESL, it's all about staffing. When we can't find people to do the work, we, we, have, we just can't find people to do the work. And we find other ways to spend it that meet the program needs, but there comes a certain time that you just can't spend it anymore. Um, and there was just a couple, a little bit of for CTE credentials left on the table as well. So, and I know those program directors are not happy either, <laughs> but they, did, they, they worked hard. They've been working hard since March um, trying to spend down this money. So um, I, I, 80,000 out of our total state budget is, is doable. Our positions have been spent. So um, we, our, our state budget is pretty clean. Uh, grant funds, and you see other restricted, those all carry forward to next year. Capital outlay, you see the two million um, remaining, those are carryover projects. You could, because if you remember in prior months, there was a, a large encumbrance there. And, and that's projects that we've started the process but are being carried over to next year. So um, those, those funds will go as well. You'll notice that community schools did pretty well. Um, they have 20,000 remaining in their budget. We, that's a good thing. Child nutrition has 25 remaining in their budget. Um, that their, their child nutrition, we might have, have to add a little bit to them. Um, we're, we're looking to see how they're ending the year, um, looking at their fund balance. Child nutrition, because it's an enterprise fund, it, it, their fund balance looks different from the rest of our funds. We have a very clean number in the rest of our funds for fund balance, but child nutrition is just a little more complicated. So um, at this point, it does not look like we're gonna have to write them a check, and that makes me very happy. Um, so uh, does anybody have any questions about how we landed this year? financially okay and that was just for information Ms. Hines before you move on mm -hmm. uh, Madam Chair if I may I would just like to repeat what I shared in our recent finance committee meeting just my appreciation um, not just to you and your staff but as you said everyone in our school district that touches money that um, has allowed us to have a very uneventful and successful school year when it comes to management of funds. And um, I, I um, want to publicly praise you for your leadership and work on this. Um, your tireless work um, in board members. This lady was in, our, in her office almost all weekend working um, with some of her staff right there with her. So thank you all. Yes. Really appreciate it what you do Vicki thank you thank you it's a very strong team I'd like to say just did a <laughs> um, 
what I do appreciate, and I think we all appreciate, is when you present things to us, you put it in the context of what it means for our students and our curriculum and our operations. So we appreciate that very much. Thank you. Happy, happy to do it. Um, mm -hmm. on, on another positive note, um, we had our school, audit, our individual school audits last week, and um, everything was looking pretty good, pretty good. And um, just want to encourage, uh, what we always tell everybody is document, document, document. Everything needs to be documented. And I just want to say it broadcasted to the world, document everything. Um, just so in a year, you know exactly what happened uh, a long time ago. So, but thank you all. I appreciate your support. Thank you as well. And uh, well, of course we close out this year and we're already looking at next year, so just wanted to touch base with you all about um, how, what our budget development is looking for the upcoming year. Um, next slide, please. Um, county funding has come in officially, and this was our request for the county commissioners, and note that we received the, the continuation funding um, the number is different the total increase that 993,000 number is not precise because of the way we've changed how we're funding school resource officers so um, but we we received the full funding request for our continuation funds um, we did not receive um, the increase we requested for local supplements so we did not receive that funding from um, from the county However, we did receive the increase in capital outlay, and, and that was a significant increase as well. So, um, so overall, we're, we're positive about the, the funding that we received from the county. Next slide. Ms. Heisen, if I may. Yes, absolutely. Regarding SRO funding, yes. um, we give the board members just a real brief sure, explanation of, course. of what happened there, of because course. it turned out to be a net gain for us. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, you know, basically the, the county has worked out, they, you know, they took our, our continuation request, but reduced it by the amount that we always pay back to them for school resource officers. Um, so the county is going to be funding our school resource officers. Um, we will fund, through our grant funding, the resource officers through Butner directly. And, um, and any additional grant money that we get will go back to the county to support those um, those additional officers. Does that make sense? Because basically before they were giving us the money yes. minus the charter yes. distribution and then yes. we would turn around and give it right back to them. Right. Are we going to need a new memorandums of understanding or anything? We are waiting from the county attorney for those okay. drafts. Um, so, the so first the total number of uh, SROs we have going into next year. I'm sorry, Mr. Peace, say that one more time. Counted, the number of officers. So currently we have funding for nine positions district wide. Um, some of those are grant funded, some the district pays paid for, mm -hmm. and in the future the county will pick up everything else. Uh, but six of those are currently with the sheriff's office, one is with Butner Public Safety, and two are with Creedmoor. So, so six. We still don't have any Oxford. No, sir. Okay. I'm working on it though. Okay. I'm I'm bugging them quite a bit. <laughs> and then this summer we will apply for the additional well the the state SRO grant funding application will open once they pass their budget and we'll be seeking enough money to have an SRO at every school so we go from 9 to 15 how we apply for that money before Dr. Wimborn, how we apply for that money before the money from the state to hire SROs yes ma'am we, we did apply for it before were we successful uh, we were successful for what we asked for but we did not it's complicated, so we really didn't ask for as many as we should have because we didn't have the proper 
MOU in place. Okay. We were told after the fact. Again, um, we feel like we're in a much better position this time around to ask for everything we need for. We need. But we're still going to need um, to really um, reach out and ask for our state lawmakers' support and any friends that we have to put in a good work for us on this application. first item um, that we always have to address at this time of year is our interim budget resolution. Um, this is a resolution that simply allows us to continue functioning fiscally. Um, it is basically allowing us to, um, to move forward with the funds that we, we have with our prior year budget. Um, so this is, this is just a, a little clip of the blurb that's in the full document that's on board docs, um, but it's, again, um, this is an action item that um, is just, again, for us to continue operations fiscally. Is there any questions? Do we have a motion? I have a second. Motion's been made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay. Frequently we want to see uh, our, an update on the fund balance, so just wanted to, to refresh. We, you know, we throw about around the term fund balance quite a bit. Um, I like to think of, of the fund balance as our emergency fund. It is, it is our little little rainy day savings fund so that if there is an emergency we have the funds readily available to manage the, that emergency and it's important to know that that emergency is frequently the the fact that we haven't gotten our allocation from the state yet or we haven't gotten our federal allocation yet so we don't have access to those funds so there are times that we have to use local funds um, until those funds come available and then can be reimbursed from those funds Okay, so this is our emergency fund. We anticipate ending the year with about 5.7 million remaining in that fund. We've already allocated about 350,000 to that 10 month classified um, bonus for our classified staff. And, and that's gonna happen in August. So we anticipate leaving this year with about six, six and a half percent in our fund balance. Okay. Uh, We are getting to that. <laughs> we are absolutely getting to that. <laughs> so um, our, uh, this is a status on where we are with the budget. We have received our planning allotments. You saw those last meeting. Um, we've received our local appropriation from the county. So we are really starting that nitty gritty work on the budget um, now. Um, what's important to know as, as we're moving, as we're working on that budget is that it includes the continuation of those ESSER programs that we as, a, as a, an executive team felt were priorities for the district, right? So it includes some of those expenses in there. Um, it also includes the over $1 million reduction um, from that happened when, we, when the departments did their zero-based budget. That's a, it's quite a significant reduction that we were able to do. Um, so, it, so the budget includes all of that. The budget as it stands right now includes all of that. Um, Science, can you pause yes, right there absolutely. for a second? I want to make sure I'm, I'm clear. I want the public to hear this too. So you're saying that through our work with zero-based budgeting, we were able to save nearly a million dollars with our departments, which what, what happens to that money? What happens to that money? We can use it for other priorities. I, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Do you and have any idea before this past year where we used a fair amount of uh, funds from our fund balance in the past? What kind of um, amounts did we have to use? You know, it, it varied from year to year. Mm -hmm. um, 
I mean, because when we talk about use of use of fund balance, it really is 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 something that we only look at at, at year end. It's like when we create the budget, we're allocating mm -hmm. fund balance, and then we it's it is in our audit. Then that you know it's confirmed how much we added to fund balance or how much we reduced fund balance. Um, so it's not clear how often we have to dig in during the year, but it's it's just always kind of there. Um, we haven't used fund balance um, except for what we've said we're going to use it for, for several years because we've had all these COVID funds. We've been adding to fund balance. And, and years before that, we were adding. But when I talk about, and I'll talk about it again, remember we were talking about the cliff before the cliff? Right before COVID happened, that budget was created with the idea of it was like 933,000, I think, that we were gonna have to use a fund balance that year to cover those positions. But ESSER came along, those ESSER dollars came and we didn't have to do that. So it, it varies for me. We've had years that we just continue to build. Then we have years that we, uh, we are decreasing our fund balance. So it does vary. Thank you. But the preliminary work on the budget this year um, made me sweat a little bit because it, it had us using $3.7 million in fund balance. $3.7 million in fund balance. So I, I mean, let's be clear though. Mm -hmm. The money in fund balance is, is, comes entirely from local funds. Yes, it does. So that is already money Absolutely. Whether it comes from the commissioners directly to our annual budget or whether it's sitting in the fund balance waiting for us to utilize it for mm -hmm. whatever we need necessary. Correct. It all comes from the same bucket. Correct. Okay. Yes. I think some people don't, like, it can be a little confusing. Sure. Absolutely. I think it's a, that's a really good point. Don't, like, that. Right. It's all county money. Right. It's all county that's money. All Exactly. It's, it's our savings account. It's our rainy day funds that we have been having in the bank. And that's the question is how we want to use those rainy day funds, that emergency fund. Is this an emergency? Next slide, please. So again, I told you I was starting to sweat when I saw that 3.7 million <laughs> in fund balance. So I really started to dig in and just try to think of the areas that are causing us to use so much fund balance. Um, one, and some of the first two items are those continuation of ESSER. What we're continue, continuing from ESSER, we're continuing that attendance officer because attendance is a priority for us right now. So we're continuing that. We'd like to continue um, instructional coaches and those NC Ed Corps um, tutors because academics is a priority in this district. Um, Obviously, recruitment and retention has, has been an issue in this district. Um, and that 12% certified supplement and the increasing the classified supplement to 5%, um, we see as priorities um, because we, we want to keep our people around. And as the counties around us are increasing, um, we see it as a priority to, to maintain, at least maintain. This is not increasing from where we are, except for the classified, which is a, is a slight increase. Um, is, it's maintaining that 12% for our school-based certified. So that's um, just under a million right there. Those last two items. Can you pause for a second? Of course. Thank you. So that third bullet, that is something that we, the administration feels very strongly has got to be a part our budget for next year to your exact point we cannot go backwards on what our supplement is for our teachers and in understanding the challenges we're facing hiring classified staff this minimum increase is definitely needed Correct. Because, as you said, to your point, we were able to use COVID funds to cover some of those other expenses. But now, like I said, mm -hmm. it's all the same. 
So, and, and again, you know, what better way to spend it than on those three, those three first bullets that we see are critical. You know, right there, attendance, academics, and the third bullet really is about academics because it's about staffing our, our educators, re recruiting and retaining. But the next two, the next two are, are things that we've been looking at and, and is no big surprise to any of us because we've talked about them over and over again. Um, that The first one is the positions that we have that are over our state allotments, um, specifically state. Our TAs, we are allotted for elementary TAs and, and we have that taken care of. It's, we, but we also have middle school and high school TO, TAs. They are our um, deans of instruction, deans of, is that right? Um, ISS, ISS coordinators. Um, they are our, our media. They, they handle lots of different areas in our schools, but they are purely at the middle school and high school level. Um, instructional support, you know, that those are our nurses and our social workers and our counselors, um, but we also cover media coordinators and and additional counselors um, that we have so we we do have some instructional support over that position we have some interventionists as well and then of course APs and we, we've talked before about how APs are funded um, by the state and and we know that we are over our um, our AP allotment and and that's two million when we look at just those positions two million dollars in those positions um, this, the, the second part of that is, again, what I just referenced earlier is those pre-cliff positions. Um, when we first started talking about way, that was the 21-22 budget, um, the total cost was 933000 We've been able to whittle that down to 474000 but it's still 474000 Those are our school-based clerical, our custodians. With the, with the facilities we have, we see that those positions are critical in maintaining um, the basic needs of the, of the buildings. It's those two areas that we see as our targets be, uh, for efficiency. And Ms. Hines, I, if I could ask Ms. Curran to elaborate, because this is, th these numbers are after a lot of really hard work that's already been done. Correct, yes. Yeah. So these numbers are after the 59.7 positions that we have cut for the 24-25 school year. So of that 59.7, 28 of them were the permanent long-term subs that are no longer going to be in place, but the other 31.7 were actual positions that were funded locally, a couple were funded through ESSER funds that are no longer existing and we still have the, these numbers on the screen. And fortunately, we did not have to riff. No, we did not have to riff. Any of them. Correct. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so the next steps we have right now are continuing to work on those budgets. I'll continue to work with departments. Um, but we're also researching how we can improve efficiency. As we mentioned before, we're looking at the utility costs um, as, as a target. Um, that's just one of those options. Um, we'll develop the final budget resolution in the fall once the state passes the final budget and make any ad adjustments that are, that are due at that time. Um, but right now, we are making a recommendation that we continue the 12% school-based certified supplement and increase the classified supplement to 5% for all classified employees. So we are making that recommendation at this time. Motion's been made and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion passed unanimously. For the minutes, would that be effective July 1? Oh, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, board members. We will, armed with this information, we'll begin to share this with all of our employees. This is great news. Are there any other questions in general about the 24 25 budget plans? Thank you, Ms. Hans. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Appreciate this and answering all our questions.
At this time, we need to have a motion to go into closed sessions for the purposes set forth in the agenda. So moved. Need a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, board, we are back in uh, open session. Um, do we have a motion to approve the personnel report as presented? So moved. Second. Motion's been made and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Dr. Frederick, I believe, has left, so he's not able to vote on that. Um, the only other thing I think we have is just looking at our upcoming events. Um, the please put on your calendar August the 1st for our summer graduation, which will be at 6 p.m. at Northern Granville Middle School. Um, also, I think, have you turned in your robes? Because I'm, I'm just gonna wait and do it after August 1st. That way we won't have another one. They'll give them plenty of time. So if you haven't done it yet, you can just keep it your robe graduate i think we've got that august 1st graduation it may be that jackie was just interested in doing it before she left but anyway i think that will be fine um there is a operations committee meeting tomorrow at nine o'clock and i'm going to try to join it virtually i have a medical appointment but i'm going to try to listen in and i may be through earlier than i think so we'll see okay well, i have a 10 30. So I'm with you from 9 until 10. I'm out of there. <laughs> okay. All right. It's nothing else. Uh, also, the book bus, uh, if anyone can go volunteer, that would be great. Um, other than that, do I have a motion to uh, adjourn? Motion to second. Motion to be made and second. All in favor? Aye. Motion. Meeting is adjourned officially and. Thank you for your hard work and